Hi y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, it is sunrise on the Clinch River. The sun is getting ready to peek up over the trees over there. Foggy out here this morning too, but I'm getting ready to do some fishing today. Gonna bring you all with me. We're gonna take a section of this shoreline here and just work it all the way down through here. There's trees and, and, and rocks and stuff that's broken off through here. Then we got a bluff wall that's just basically a straight cliff down through there. And then some more sections of kind of like areas like this with overgrown trees and branches and stuff that's down in the water. So hopefully today we're gonna to get a mixed bag. Bluegill, bass, yellow bass, white bass, crappie, who knows, just everything, hopefully. And a lot of them, cause I'm gonna be throwing this right here. This is my favorite ultralight bait in the entire world. That's a one inch gulp minnow smelt color on a 164th ounce jig head with a number eight size hook. Got that on my trusty ultralight rod, my St. Croix panfish series rod, six foot long, two pound test line, that's trout magnet SOS line, and a 1000 size Daiwa Regal reel. And I'm just gonna take a stretch here and just beat the banks and leave the camera rolling while i'm doing it this is going to be a raw and uncut video which means you see everything every cast every fish caught every snag start to finish just like you were on a fishing trip with me out in a boat or something because that's the goal of these videos is to kind of bring you with me on a real fishing trip unedited not a highlights trip that most youtube videos are just a real authentic fishing trip and so that's what we're going to have today i'm going to get turned around here and we'll start heading down toward this cliff wall i just launched my kayak on the other side of the channel over here it's a place that's very convenient to fish here on melton hill reservoir part of the clinch river i'm fishing here today because of the boat traffic on Fort Loudon and Watts Bar on the Tennessee River. We got to, oh, oh, I had one hit me right then. I had a fish pop me right then, doggone it. I don't know what point you're seeing this video, but it's a, we got a football game this weekend. And the Tennessee, if you're not familiar with Tennessee, the Neyland Stadium where we play our college games at. Here's a fish, fish number one. But that stadium is on the Tennessee River, like right on the river as we reel in this bluegill. And one of the dumbest things in the history of the universe is what is called the Vol Navy. What do you think about this fish number one? You happy to be on video? This fish has never been happy a day in his life. Look at that look on his face. But I guarantee you he don't like the Vol Navy either. But anyway, them people, it's people with more money than brains uh, starting on about Thursday on a football weekend, they start making their way up rivers. We got another fish just like that. And they go up there and watch the ball game and do their drinking and stuff from out on the water in their houseboats. So from Thursday on, you got big houseboats, one after another, going up the Tennessee River. And so out here today, We'll be seeing some bass boats go by occasionally, but we won't be seeing no house boats just pounding us with boat wake one after another. And you know, I love me some Tennessee football. I'm a big fan, but I ain't a fan of the Vol Navy people. I can't stand them. They just ruin, well, we about had us another fish right there. They just ruin fishing for a few days. Thursday and Friday, they're going upriver. Saturdays, you can't fish Fort Loudon or Watts Bar anyway because of the bass tournaments and just the normal pleasure boat traffic. They'll beat you to death too. And then all day on Sunday, the people that went to the ball game in their houseboats, here they come back downriver. So I try to fish places where I don't have to interact with them, where I don't have to deal with them. It's better for my mental health. And so out here today, on Melton Hill. Oh man, look at this. This is a nice bluegill right here. Look at this slab, buddy. Holy cow. I'm gonna have to, we're gonna put this in on, on measuring board, but I gotta sneak over here. I'm gonna blow up on these fish if I ain't careful from that boat wake. 
We're going to put this in on the board, though. Check this out, y'all. Oh, man, look at that bluegill. Look how tall he is. He's right at the 8-inch mark. But look how tall. Look how, look at the colors on him right there, man. That is one pretty bluegill. One of the nice things about the Vol Navy, if there is one nice thing about them, is it does give me an extra excuse to come over here to fish where the bluegill fishing is significantly better than on Fort Loudon or Watts Bar. Not only is this a close drive for me, but the fishing, at least for ultralight fishing anyway, significantly better. Catfishing, way better on Fort Loudon and Wads Bar than here on Melton Hill. But any other type of fishing, I'd rather be here. Have to, I was too close to them fish, now I'm too far away from them to make a cast. We'll get it right here directly, folks. But yeah, I'm going to come out here a few hours this morning, try to catch a variety of fish try to catch a bunch of fish and most importantly have fun and hopefully those of you that choose to come along and fish with me today hopefully y'all have some fun too i hope you do anyway i'm gonna have fun with or without you <laughs> i do like getting a tug on this ultralight rod it's one of my favorite ways to fish. It's always productive. You always, you always get a bite, even if it's from a snag. I let myself get too far down in that tree. Now I was worried about blowing up on these fish and spooking them. Now I'm about to get over here on top of them and spook them anyway. I thought that big bluegill might have some friends. I want this jig back. I won't be breaking off first thing. We ain't going to subject you to that first thing, are we? Oh gosh, I think we might be breaking off. That's real world fishing, folks. Like I said, this is this is as real as it gets. Just now I'm in a tree over here with my other with my other rod. I had to bring one of my catfish rods with me. I got to get a thumbnail today before I leave. My thumbnail for my other catfish video I just filmed was messed up it, the lighting was bad so i gotta redo it today bear with me here a second y'all lord will you all sit with me for a second while i retie we're how far into the video are we we're eight minutes into this video and i already got a break off <laughs> this is gonna be the worst watched one yet that's all right i need my glasses what i need where's my dang Where's my dang reading glasses? There we go. I got it through there without them. I'm going to have to... Them glasses down there in my hatch. I'm going to have to bust them things out today. I can see that right now. One of the best presents I've ever gotten from one of my viewers is a pair of reading sunglasses. They magnify stuff 25%. So when I'm trying to retie these tiny jig heads and thread that two pound line through that tiny eyelet and reading glasses help me see the daggone things i need to get me some glasses while i need to do i need to go to the eye doctor but i just ain't at that point in life where i'm ready to do that yet that's a you really gotta you gotta i don't know you gotta just be accepting of the fact you're getting old when you go to the eye doctor and i ain't ready to accept that yet let's get this let's get this gulp here on this jig head i've said this a million times that you want to keep this thing on there straight as you can when you put it on now this one here it's tails deformed right there for some i don't know some of them are like it when you when you get your jar gulp but you don't want to put them on there crooked because then they'll be helicoptering down on you. I'm going to make another cast over there. Even though we probably spooked them fish, I'm going to, I'm going to cast over there anyway. 
Just because that, oh, I hooked one too, by gosh. I didn't spoke them all. I just got to pick up on that jig before we let it get down into the tree. That's what I got to do. There wasn't as big as that other one. Let's do it again. I see that tree where it comes off in the water there. It clearly has some branches too since I was in it with that other jig. That tree's probably heard about these videos and how popular they've been. He wanted a souvenir. Can't blame it. It got it one by gosh permanently. Make one more cast over. If we don't get bit, we're moving on. We'll move on and find some more trees down through here. There's plenty more where that one came from. I suspect we'll get on them all the way down through here. I hope we do anyway. Oh man, I had one thump me. I had one hit me back there and I pulled it out about five feet away from it. Got excited. figure out who that was behind me it's a daggone kayaker like a real kayaker not not a fishing kayaker but like a real paddler get a little paranoid people sneaking up on me in the fog y'all don't know if it's a person or a ghost i don't like either one i don't like people or ghosts depending on which one i'm interacting with at the time it's which one i don't like the most At least the ghosts can't talk back, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we're going to take a good, good long stretch of this here today. Probably going to fish for well, this fish right here. He wish I'd never showed up. I done hurt his mouth. I've sore lipped this one. But I'm probably going to fish for he unhooked himself. That fish right there, he's he's applying for my job here, official fish dehooker. I'm probably gonna fish three to four hours today. I got some stuff I gotta handle at the house today. I ordered a I know y'all don't give a crap about this, but you know, if you's out here fishing with me, this would be the kind of crap we was talking about as I'm snagged in yet another tree. Let's see if we can get this one back. Boy, if I've lost two jigs in 10 minutes here of the video, there ain't none of you that's going to stick around. And I couldn't blame you for not doing it. I set the hook in that thing pretty good, too. There it come. I got it. Crisis averted. Anyway, y'all don't care about this, but I got me a new bed last week and uh well what gosh mighty i missed a fish and sent that jig flying back at us it's a wonder it didn't put your eye out anyway i got a new bed last week my other bed it was worn out i mean when you get up out of this thing it'd be creaking and uh, it was creaking so loud when i get up in the mornings i couldn't hear my knees and ankle pop that's how loud this bed had gotten so anyway i got me a new bed and it was fairly easy to put together i ordered it off amazon there and it's like a hundred bucks it wasn't bad you know pretty pretty cheap looks decent and it had several pieces but i put it together in about an hour or so and so that that project went well now, I'm not the, I'm not a mechanically inclined person at all, so it's a big accomplishment anytime I put something together. So anyway, I get this bed put together, feeling good about myself, and I decide, you know what? I got this new bed, and it's got this, you know, old rustic wood look to it. It's like I'm gonna get the matching dresser for it, really spruce up the place, you know. 
So I ordered the dresser. Well, it showed up yesterday. And the box, the box is so damn heavy, UPS wouldn't even bring it to my back door. They, they left it under my carport. And I go to pick this box up and it's, it's hernia causing weight. Like if, it, if this box, if it was a catfish, I wouldn't be able to lift it in this kayak. It was so damn heavy. So I end up having to open the box out on the carport and carry it in a little bit at a time to the house. But this thing, this dresser, y'all, I bet you it's a million pieces. A million. I ain't even exaggerating. It's probably 995,000 pieces I got to put together. So I think I've bit off more than I could chew with this project, but I gotta, I gotta work on that this evening. So it's gonna be one of them. I hope today I'm gonna try to get home about noon, eat me some lunch, cause I'm gonna need some energy for that project. And I hope to finish it before dark. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. I just thought, you know, I'd get the dresser. It would probably be in as many pieces as the bed i had no idea it was going to show i didn't know i was going to put together each individual panel of each drawer and all that i mean it was a had i known how many pieces it was i would have talked myself out of buying it so either way i've committed to the project because as heavy as it is i ain't sending it back like it's not one of them things that's getting returned, so. And I don't even want to carry all the pieces back out of the house to put it back in the box to attempt it, so. It's in my house permanently. Now whether or not I can get it together, that's a different story. I just ain't never been, I just ain't never been mechanically inclined like that. I just, here's a fish. That was out from the bank of good ways right there. Another nice bluegill. Come up here, bluegill. A little better one right there. I don't think you're board worthy, but you're a nice bluegill nonetheless. Tell these people hi, would you? He ain't got nothing to say to you people. But I just ain't never been a mechanically inclined person some people's got it and some people don't when it comes to building skills i ain't got it never have even as a kid and stuff like i wasn't one of the i was when i was a kid i played with action figures uh gi joes ninja turtles wrestling figures that's what i was into as a kid i wasn't into legos like you wasn't ever gonna see me putting together a Lego set. I don't even know that I ever, I'm sure I had Legos, but I don't I don't ever remember like getting a, like these Lego sets you see at the, at the Walmarts and stuff today, which them things is outrageously priced by the way, just side note. I was walking through the toy department the other day and there's one of them's like seventy nine ninety nine. It was some Star Wars thing. I'm like, what the hell kid's gonna pay what what kid has seventy nine dollars to buy a Star Wars Lego set? Like I, I don't I don't get it. But I never did that stuff as a kid. I couldn't put together I couldn't build nothing. I just I never had to tell it. I think you're born with it. Some people got it and some people don't. I ain't got it. And it ain't, and, and, the, and the worst part about it is, you know, most skills you may not be professional at if you ain't got a natural talent for it. But you can at least get better at things throughout life. I mean, if you apply yourself, if you're willing to learn, if you're into it, you can get better at a skill even if you never reach a a level where you're really elite at it but I just don't have any desire to even get better at it. like I hate putting stuff together 
Like I, I don't even. Part of me was want to stay out here and fish all day, just so I won't have to go home and and attempt to put this thing together. Is that that fish ready to go home right now? That fish has had enough of this mess. He he's had enough of it. He said he ain't he ain't putting together no dresser. That fish don't wear clothes. He don't need to put nothing inside a dresser. These fish are smarter than us, ain't they? You know how much money these fish save throughout their lifetime by not having to buy clothes and not having to buy things like dressers and 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 clothes hangers to store their clothes on. They don't have to buy shoes. That fish right there has never had to buy a pair of Michael Jordan tennis shoes to try to fit in in school. Them fish, he's in school all day there with his friends. He's never had a pair of Michael Jordan tennis shoes. These fish got it figured out in life. Of course, with that being said, there's, there's a lot of people I don't want to see walking around butt naked either. You know, just in my mind right now, I'm thinking about grocery shopping and Walmart. You imagine if people didn't have clothes on, what you'd be seeing? I'm about to puke in my mouth a little bit. We keep seeing these bass boats go by. I'm going to be doing more than puking in my mouth. I'm going to be spewing cuss words up my mouth. I knew we'd see a few more over here today, but I didn't expect we'd see be seeing them this early. They must have put in a different wrap because they ain't, but two, it looks like two cars over there at the ramp I launched in, me and Probably that kayak person that went by. So I guess they've used a different ramp. I knew we'd see more of them over here today because of the Vol Navy people. I just, I just can't stand them, man. They just, they got no courtesy. They got their giant houseboats, which are way too big for the Tennessee River. I mean, they're damn ocean liners, ocean yachts. And they barrel through there pound you with boat wake. You can't fish. I mean, you just, you, you can forget about fishing out there with that mess. So I come over here. This is one of my favorite areas to ultralight fish anyway, and I ain't been here all year. So I thought, oh, I was going to show that one off. He didn't care. Ungrateful thing. But this this stretch right here is one of my favorite areas to ultralight fish because I can access it very easily. It's very close to the launch. It's beautiful out here when bass boats aren't buzzing by. And I always do well right through here. I always catch some good quality bluegill. I usually get some smallmouth. Yeah, you get some variety of fish. And I ain't been here all year. So I was like, you know, and today's the perfect day to come hit this spot. The water just calmed down. Here comes another one. He did, I mean, I guarantee he just drove by a thousand bass to go, go over there and try to catch them somewhere else. These bass all up and down through here. You ain't gotta, you ain't gotta run all of creation to catch bass. What the heck do I know? Them guys don't think I know anything. They think they're better than somebody because they in a boat and you in a kayak. I don't need a boat to catch fish. All I need is a positive attitude, which I'm having trouble keeping with all these boats going by. We're going to have a good day, though. We're going to have some fun today. It's fun reeling in these big bluegill. I've got a feeling at some point down through here we're going to we're going to hook into a bass, too. Smallmouth, probably. You know where you got bluff walls, like here comes another fish. We've had several fish right off the bat today. Anytime you got bluff walls like this, it seems like smallmouth like to hang out around them. Come here, bluegill. That's another good one. We might put this one on the board. This one right here is another one that's going to be probably close to eight inches there's he's splashed some water in my face i don't know if he got y'all or not so 
put this down here. Show yourself all fair on that board. Please. Oh, goodness gracious now. Hey, hey. Now you up under the seat now. Hey. Boy, this fish did not want to be measured. Did he? I can't get a hold of the thing, y'all. Where's he at? There he is. Lord, fish, you're holding up production here, man. We're filming a show, fish. These people ain't waiting on you. You wait. Oh, that's why he didn't want to be measured. He knew he wasn't going to hit that eight inch mark, y'all. He knew he was going to be about a half inch short. He was embarrassed. I got my hands all slimed up trying to get a hold of that thing. Goodness, great. Let me take a look at you. Did he get y'all? No, y'all good there on the lens. He didn't splash no water on you. He just got me in the face. Let's spin back around here and hit that area again. There's some big bluegill. If I, can, if I can get myself to be a little bit patient and let that jig sink down a little further, we're getting a little better quality fish, I feel like. We're just going to swing back up here and hit this right here where this rock wall starts again. They, they swings up there. People climb up there and jump off that thing. They've lost their damn mind. I think it's pretty deep. I don't have my graph on this kayak, but uh, I think it's, we're probably setting 20 something feet water right here where I'm at. I mean, it drops straight off off this wall here, but I can't tell you exact water, water depth or water temperature without a graph. But them people up there, they swinging off them things. Landing in that water, they're going to break their neck. Every year you hear stories on the news, people drowning doing that crap. Every year, people do it anyway. They probably say the same thing about me. Every year you hear people drowning, went out in kayaks. Here comes another boat. Well, there's a lot of boat traffic today for this hour. I mean, I thought... I knew there would be more, and I really thought, of course, this afternoon, for sure. There's a lot of, a lot of boats first thing this morning. All right, we still gonna catch our fish anyway. Most of these boats going by, I probably won't catch a daggone thing. They gonna, they gonna catch some grief at the gas pump when they put all that Waste all that money filling up their boats, what they're gonna do. But you, I ain't fished out of a boat like that in years. I when I was a teenager I had a I had a aluminum bass boat and then I briefly had a bullet uh, bass boat, fiberglass boat there too, but I doubt the fuel economy in them things has gotten any better in the last 20 years. I'd say it's still piss poor gas mileage in them things. Well, I thought we was going to circle back up here and catch some more fish, but ain't looking like that at the moment. Try to let that thing, if I can, if I can be patient, it's hard for me to be patient. Especially when you getting bit as much as we've gotten bit here first thing. It's hard for me to have the patience to let that thing sink down to the deeper depths. I need to do it though, I need to, I need to force myself to be patient. I'm gonna do it on this cast. I'm gonna let this one get down there at least eight to 10 feet deep before I pick up on it. Unless the fish hits it before then. Thought a fish might've had me then, but I think the wind hit my line, made it jump a little bit. Nothing. 
Huh. Well. All right, then we'll keep moving along here. As the wind pushes us along, we'll go back to fishing how we was, just letting it sink down a few feet and making more casts. I thought for sure there'd be something down there a little deeper under them fish that we got. That's what I get for thinking right. It'll teach me. One of these days I'll learn. Don't do so much damn thinking, just go do some more doing. Ain't it amazing though when you look at these these cliff walls like this, these bluff walls, you have these trees growing out of the cracks right there. Nature's pretty impressive, ain't it? Places that life can can, can grow, not only grow but thrive. I mean, there's a whole stretch of uh, right there that's got a few trees and bushes growing out of it. Just cracks in the daggone rock wall. I mean, that, that, that tree right there can grow and thrive in a crack inside a rock wall and yet I can't be comfortable unless I got heat and air conditioning in my house. <laughs> I just something. <laughs> yeah. That's the way it is though. I ain't I ain't looking to trade places with that tree, that's for damn sure. I'd like to have that jig trade places with the fish in its mouth. Reel in another one here. It's been a minute. I tell you, I get impatient. We, we start out catching all them fish like we did right from the start. And now I'm impatient, man. I want to get another one. And then I want to get another one after that. I'd like to, I'd like to catch at least 50 out here before I call it quits today. I don't know if we'll get there or not, but I'd like to. We got another boat fishing their way toward us here. That might be awkward. I hope they I hope they're like most bass fishermen. They fish about three minutes somewhere and then they motor on to the next place. I ain't looking to talk to nobody today. And my regular viewers know I don't like talking on camera around people. So, I'm going to need them people to just mosey along before they get here. That's one of the nice things about, there's a lot of things I love about kayak fishing. A lot of things, but one of the perks of it, if you're not really a people person, you know, I'm definitely not. I mean, I'll talk to y'all on the camera, but I don't want to be talking to people in person and stuff. I'm not, I'm just not that social. But when you kayak fishing, I can't bring anybody physically in the kayak with me. I can bring y'all along with me on camera as we hung in a tree, but we got it back. I'll gladly bring you along on camera, but I can't physically bring you along here in the kayak with me but even if you are fishing with another person and they got their own kayak usually when people are kayak fishing together there's some space between you you know both of you just kind of you kind of fish in the same area but you're doing your own thing well i done a there we go that's better i done a lousy job rehooking that gulp but it allows me to be antisocial while I'm being social, even when I'm fishing with somebody and we're kayak fishing together. There's another fish. Where you been, fish? Long time coming. Get over here. Show yourself off. What are you? I think you're a bluegill, and I think you're pretty good, too. You are. This is another solid one right here, man. 
this will be another one here. I'm probably just throwing the board just for doo-doos and giggles. Let's see what you are, fish. Will you will you calm or be calm more so than your friend? Mm-hmm. Be good for me there. Be good for me. Yeah, he'll graze that eight inch line right there just barely. That's another good one, man. That makes me happy, y'all. That really makes me happy. I like catching big bluegill. And you get a bluegill that's eight inches. It's a good fight on an ultralight, but there's just it's for me it's satisfying to catch them size fish out here on public water. You know, when you when you fish in ponds and stuff where fish are, are kind of managed better. Eight inches not really that exciting, right? Because you know you're you're catching oftentimes nine and ten inch class fish in those situations. But public water, you just don't see. You just don't see a lot of. At least in this area, anyway, you don't see a lot of nine and ten inch class bluegill. Throughout the year, every year, I'll get a few that's you know over nine inches but i can't it's been a while since i've got one that's hit the 10 inch mark bluegill anyway you know i'll get a shell cracker occasionally i don't catch a lot of shell cracker which they're uh you know sunfish species often confused with bluegill uh, they get a little bigger but the bluegill just you just don't catch them that big in public water around here. So it's always satisfying when I get these eight inchers. It's just, uh, they're, they're fun. We're going to hopefully get several more of them down through here today. This area usually produces some, well, all of, all of this body of water produces some good quality bluegill. Thankfully, people around here don't really don't really keep a lot of fish because of the contamination and stuff. That's one of the things that seems to hurt a lot of bluegill fisheries is people keeping the bigger fish. You know, people don't want to eat a five inch bluegill. There ain't no meat on it. So they'll keep them eight plus inch bluegill, which are the, the type of fish that you, here's a bass boat. I can't even talk, he's so loud. Can't even hear myself think. He's got to drive 90 miles an hour to go catch that fish. That fish is apparently leaving soon. He's got to get there before he goes. Well, I was trying to say people eat them bluegill that are eight inches and, and up. And those are the ones that you want spawning, passing their genes along and stuff, you know. So oftentimes you end up with areas that have a lot of fish but they're five six inch fish in that range the other bodies of water i have around me have good numbers of bluegill but you just don't like well like the last raw and uncut video for instance i, f I filmed it on fort loudon i was up in knoxville Tennessee and I caught I caught bluegill all morning there I mean just one after another after another I mean it was a very good day for numbers but I don't think I got a single fish that was that was that would touch the eight inch mark I don't think there was even one close to it I think about seven inches was as good as it got but out here today hell we've already got some that's touched eight inches so it's amazing the difference in the fishery. Well, this look at this cliff wall, y'all. I mean, look at that. I mean, it is just straight, straight down. There ain't nothing here. I'm fishing places like this. I usually like to try to 
throw it as close to the wall as possible because you'll get a little on the way down through there you'll get little outcroppings almost like a, a roof situation kind of like what's over I don't know if you can see it on camera but there's just a little small area of that rock that comes out and fish will get up under there kind of and as stuff falls down they'll they'll come out and get it kind of ambush it there you see that like if you go to the any of you's ever been to the bass pro shops they always got them big aquariums in the bass pro and usually the back side of them aquariums is like a i guess a fake rock wall if you will and you'll see fish oftentimes kind of just they'll just be sitting there like with a almost like a roof over their head where part of that rock wall comes out and i ain't never put on a diving suit and went down there but i guarantee the same thing's going on out here and out here in the lakes and rivers and stuff just like it is at the bass pro aquarium with how fish set up and relate to structure and stuff i don't hardly ever go to bass pro we got one up in in Sevierville, tennessee but i don't ever go up there it's almost an hour drive for me from my house and I'm just, it's 2023, you know, hell, I'm, if I want something, I'm just going to order it and have it sent right to my house, you know. I ain't trying to go do physical shopping in a store, and this is something right here that I don't think is a bluegill. I don't know what this is. Something just gobbled me up, man. Whatever it is, he's. I wonder if that ain't a channel cat. It felt like he rolled. It's big, whatever it is. I, I think it's probably a channel cat. If it was a bass, he'd be. I'd feel his head shake. He'd probably be coming up a little bit, jumping up on the surface by now. This one's staying down. They don't feel like a drum or a a carp or anything dang channel cat man well y'all just if you needed a bathroom break now's the time to do it this is going to be a few minutes I can't horse him with this two pound line I'll, I'll break it thankfully he's headed out this direction so he's not going to get me he's not going to get me on any trees or get me wrapped in anything anything to cut my line look at this you see this film on the water here I think that's probably like gas and oil and stuff from them boats that's what it looks like ain't no boats ain't no wonder this channel cat's trying to stay down he don't want to come up here in this film and get, get that all over him now he's taking off He's got that rod doubled over, don't he? <laughs> All right, fish, where are you going now? Goodness gracious, folks. He's still going. He's taking some line. We may have to go. I'm trying to get him turned back this way, but just keeping pressure on him. But we may have to go chase him down because you maybe see there that that black area on my line. That's a piece of tape because I don't fill my spools all the way up with new line every time. I only fill it half the the outer half with new line. And so if he gets down to that tape, we're in trouble. He'll spool me. Let me just try to put a little bit more pressure on him here. I feel like he's winding down a little bit. Like he wants to turn. He may not want to turn, but he's going to turn. We're going to lead him back this way. Well, he stripped off a bunch of line, didn't he? I think this is probably a channel cat, though. I mean, I ain't 100% certain, but 
it kind of felt like he rolled at one point. Let's turn this way and see if we can let's see if we can make up a little line on him here. He's gonna pull me out here in the sun. I'm gonna have to put my shades on just to be able to see to reel this fish in. That sun got up in the sky quick. Come on, fishy. You're cutting into our bluegill fishing here, fish. I'd much rather be catching a eight inch bluegill than any size channel cat, but I'm I'm committed at this point to seeing this through. I tell you folks, you get a, a fish like this on an ultralight and two pound line, you just gotta take your time with it. You just, you can't horse them. You gotta just, you gotta play the fish. It's, it's kinda, it's, it's, it's really, it, it's part of the fun of the challenge, if you will, because the fish have a chance in this situation to break your line or to straighten the hook. You know, most of the time we're fishing with such heavy tackle. All these bass guys we've seen drive by today, you know, they're fishing for bass that are out here are going to be three pounds or less. 99% of them is going to be three pounds or less. And most of them are throwing rods that are medium heavy, heavy action, 20 plus pound line. They hook a fish, they snatch it up. I mean, the fight's over in less than 30 seconds. You know, them fish and bass ain't got a chance. When you got an ultralight and two pound line and you hook something that's bigger than your line, than your line poundage, it's it's a it's a sporting match if you will it's a it's a duel here the fish has a very good chance of winning this battle I'm, i am still going to be disappointed if it is a channel cat though i ain't gonna lie to you so i'm never happy to see a channel cat ever One time in my life, I was happy for a channel cat. It was Sandusky Bay. I was fishing a tournament up there a few months ago. And I needed them to try to win some money, which I didn't do. That was about the only time I was happy to see a channel cat. we got to be getting close. To, oh, I see part of a tail there. I see part of a tail. I didn't see enough of it to see what it is. Come over here, fish. We're so close to seeing what you are. Oh, no, that ain't a... Y'all, I just got more excited about this. This is a big drum. I just got a lot more excited, man. That ain't no channel cat. That's a, that's a drum. Nice, man. He didn't fight like a drum, typically. He, I mean, he did for part of the fight. He made that long run there. Usually these drum, they, they fight, they make more surges like that, at least the ones I've caught in the past. Now here's the challenge, folks. Here's the challenge. We gotta try to land this thing. I don't have a net with me. We're gonna just try to get him up here by the side of the kayak and I'm gonna try to scoop him in with my hand. This is where this is where the highest likelihood of having a line breakage is is right here at this moment. I have to kind of I have to kind of grab the line or try to grab him. And he is a handful. He's about wore out at this point. I'm gonna try to get him by the mouth here. Maybe we'll get him up here again. Oh, I just got a lot more excited about this fish. I thought for sure it was a channel cat. I thought I thought I felt him roll initially. That's really what got me thinking he was a channel cat. 
but I'm so happy <laughs> he didn't break off before we got a look at him here. I like some big drum, man. Very underrated fish. All right, fish, we're gonna try to do this now, buddy. We're gonna try to let's see if I can let's see if I can get hold of you. Oh, don't don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, buddy. They got a funny mouth here. It's hard to hard to get hold of them here. Let's just let's bring him in like that. Nice man. Nice fish right here. We're gonna set our front camera mount up for this one. Let's get this. Let's get this hook out. I want you to look at this right here, man. One inch gulp minnow, ultralight, two pound test line, and we just got fish here that's uh, he's ever been ten pounds probably. Let me grab my front camera mount and set it up here, y'all. We're gonna do some. We're gonna get a picture of this one, I think. I might have to get my sunglasses on because I'm looking into the sun, but that's all right. I am excited about this fish, man. Come here, buddy. Oh, oh, oh. Easy now, easy. <laughs> oh, I'm looking into that sun, y'all. Man. Somebody's getting a show over at the boat ramp, too, because they see me holding it up. <laughs> Awesome. That's a nice drum, man. Heck of a battle on the ultralight. All right, well, let's see if we can get the camera here. Oh, oh, oh. Let's see if we can get the camera, get the release shot on him. There he goes. He gone. Oh, man. Y'all, it ain't often we do a fist pump worthy fish on an ultralight video. But gosh, we just got one, man. That is awesome. Oh, man. Let me get the camera back in the chest. We got a leaf on my hand. Let me dry my hands off here, and we're going to get back to it, y'all. How awesome was that? I'm telling you, you just never know what you're going to hook into. When you're throwing any small plastic like this, when you throw in a gulp, I'm gonna switch this gulp out. That one's about had it. But when you get when you get fish and you're in a body of water that's especially out here where there where shad's the predominant species, as the forage species anyway big fish eat small fish and when you're throwing a small plastic like this gulp it represents the bottom of the food chain and they're gonna gobble it up you put it in their face they'll gobble it up i've caught some big fish on this setup right here bass carp which carp are mostly plant eaters you know you don't think of carp eating a gulp but by gosh i've caught them caught big drum i mean it's just let's let's get rid of this camera mount here too it's gonna be on our way trying to cast now i had to put that up eric so i want to get me a i want to get me a picture of that fish that fish right there he may get him an extra instagram follower because that's probably where i'm gonna post it let's swing back around over i can't remember i can't remember where we was at on this cliff wall when he hit let's just go let's swing back up here come through there again if there's more drum over there i'd like to catch them what was that squeaking on my pedal drive we're gonna have to some of you need to bust out some wd-40 or something here that squeaking will drive me and you both insane let's get back over here get out of that sun it's blinding me i'm gonna have to get my shades on y'all before long don't look like there's a cloud in the sky today people over there walking their dog at the boat ramp they got to see a big fish today didn't they they'll be telling their friends about it we was over at the lake walking the dog and this fellow's out in the kayak he caught a big old fish then he let it go he didn't even eat it Anytime you see somebody that's 
not a typical fisherman, you know, they're always like, why didn't you keep it to eat? It don't matter what it is. It could be anything. Why didn't you eat it? Man, I'm still pumped up about that. Y'all, I went from I went from being excited when it first hit because I knew it was a uh, I knew it wasn't a bluegill. It was a it was a heavier fish, and then I thought it rolled, so I was kind of disappointed. It was a channel cat, and it made that long run out there, and I was kind of questioning things in my mind. I'm like, well, that's not typically something a channel cat would do, making that long a run. Then I saw that it was a drum in my mind. I was like, oh man, now I don't want to lose it. <laughs> It was a wide range of emotions in that fight that took several minutes. It was fun though. That made my day. My day was made anyway, just coming out here, getting to do this. But that really made my day. And I always like to emphasize in these videos for this style of fishing, you don't need a lot of fancy gear. You know, I'm in a basic kayak today. No motor, no fish finder, no batteries. I'm out here with one rod, some jig heads, and some gulp. That's it. And, you know, now we've already got a bunch of fish. Now we've got a big fish. You just don't need a lot. You don't need a lot to do this style of fishing. It's one, of the, it's one of the great things about it is you can keep things very basic and simple and still have a great time and catch a ton of fish. You can do that for just about any fish, truth be told. I mean, it's human beings, and I'm, I'm as guilty as any other human. We complicate the hell out of everything. We... And I don't know why we do it, but we do. I don't know why I do it, but I do. We just, we make things so much more difficult and so much more specialized than they have to be. You know, my, my uh, catfishing adventures, for instance. You know, my other kayak I've got, I saw a big fish come up right down there. I think it was a carp. But I've got live scope. I've got the motor, you know, I, I've, I've just, I've added all the bells and whistles of my other kayak. And yet the other day, I went out in this kayak catfishing. Two rod holders, two rods, and a 10 pound dumbbell I was using for an anchor. And I went out and I had a dang good time. I caught several fish. I got some big fish without a motor, without a fish finder, nothing, you know. It's just, it's it's nice when you do that. I don't know why we just feel compelled as human beings to just do what we do, you know. I don't know, it's a human thing, I guess. I don't, it ain't just isolated for me, that's for damn sure. But it's like that with anything. Any, especially, you know, in the, in the fishing, we, we we can come out with a gulp minnow and an ultralight rod and catch the hell out of fish, but yet bluegill fishermen, crappie fishermen, we, we experiment with all these different rigs and floats and different types of live baits and different types of artificial lures. And it's like, why, why, are, we making so, why, why are we making things so complicated? You know, why we do that? So I don't know why we do it, but we do. But for some reason, even though I do complicate the hell out of everything, when I take some time to get back to the basics and simplify things, I always enjoy it. Like I always appreciate, even though I don't keep things simple, when I do simplify things, I appreciate the simplicity. I appreciate fishing out of this kayak with a basic setup, no batteries to charge when I get home. 
you know it's when i hook a big catfish in this thing it's a lot more fun than hooking a big catfish in my other kayak because this one you get you get towed around a little bit you know <laughs> when a rod goes down in this one you can you can feel the dip on this kayak when it takes a rod over it's a lot more fun it's easier to catch fish in my other kayak because you know i don't put any physical effort when i'm using the motor to drive me along so you know that's nice and it's easier to get positioned on places when you got a graph you can see if fish are there or not and whatnot but you don't need all that stuff to catch fish that's for damn sure i prove it every time i fish in this kayak now, even if y'all don't even if i ain't proving it to y'all i prove it to myself <laughs> prove it to my damn self if to nobody else what is that oh hell far they got a damn remote control boat over here behind us used to be everybody's flying around drones them things was popular there for couple three years now i guess the these people done found them a remote control boat i wonder what they'd do if the battery died in that boat or well, if it was running real fast and it got out of range of your remote control i guess you'd just lose it the only thing i can figure i ain't never had a remote I had a remote control car as a kid at one point my neighbor had built a a track in his backyard to race some remote control cars around but I ain't never tried a I ain't never flown a drone and I ain't never uh, had a remote control boat that thing's loud as hell I'll tell you that y'all hear that on camera Turn. Y'all probably can't see this crap back here. But... I mean, it's zipping across the water there. I don't understand it. Ain't a toy I'm gonna buy. It ain't even a kid playing with it. It's a grown ass adult. <clears throat> I sure wish we'd get us another. I had something hit me then. I sure wish we'd get us another drum. Need a, we need another drum today. We need some smallmouth bass too. That's what we need. I think we will get, I don't know if we'll get another drum. That ain't something I catch every day. But I'm, I'm 80% confident we'll catch a smallmouth somewhere down through here. May not be a big one, but I think we'll get one. I don't hear that boat anymore. I must have done run their battery down. I would consider getting a drone if they ever made one i could launch it right here off the front of the kayak if if they would make a drone you could push a button and that thing would fly launch itself and fly around you and like follow you it would be like having your own cameraman while you was reeling in fish like say i, I had a fish go hit the rod right I'd catch that on the chest cam and I'd, I'd reach under my seat or something and I'd push a button and that drone would take off and it would start flying around while I fought the fish and then when I'm done fighting the fish it'd land itself. Now that would be something I would consider purchasing or it was completely just self-operated like I didn't have to actually fly the thing because that's what you can't do. You're reeling in a fish, you got both hands. 
and play. I can't be flying no drone. And it needs to have a battery that lasts too, because to my knowledge, them drone batteries don't last very long. So how how bad would it be? Let's say you, let's say you fighting that drone, and it and it takes you several minutes to land the thing. How bad would it be if your drone battery died during the fight and like crashed in the water? You might get a few extra views on the video of people just clicking on the video to watch the drone crash, but you'd be you'd be out a few hundred or a thousand dollars, whatever them things cost nowadays. They're pretty expensive, I think. They used to be. I imagine they still are. Just one of them things I don't. Oh boy, I had one at the end. Missed him. But them drones, one of them things I just ain't, I ain't never fool with. And I went down there to Florida a few years ago and caught a selfie. Here's a fish. We finally got hooked up again. I think this is a bluegill. With them fellas I was fishing with down there in Florida uh, on the selfish trip, they had a drone. And they got me some footage, which was pretty cool. It, it was it was pretty neat to, to see the you know the camera angle that that drone flying above you while you're fighting the fish and seeing that sailfish come up. But it'd be hard to fly the drone while you were actively fishing. And that bluegill, he ain't gonna fly it for me. He ain't got no thumbs. It'd be hard to steer it if you ain't got thumbs. They need to make an adaptive drone controller so these bluegill can be able to operate it. The bluegill feeling left out. Here's one. We're finally getting on some more over here, maybe. Yep, another bluegill. Another pretty good one, too, man. Come over here, bluegill. Show yourself off. You got some. He's got them long black ears right there. I think that's a probably a type of bluegill or sunfish. There's so many different types of them. I can't keep up. They all bluegill to me. No, I thought he might touch eight inches. He's a little bit shy, maybe quarter inch shy. Still a solid fish though. Get out of here, bluegill. I think that's that bass boat that was fishing their way toward us a little while ago. They moving on, good. I knew they wouldn't fish long, and bass fishermen never do. They fish longer than most of them do. Most of them will speed along 80 miles an hour, stop, make about five casts, and they go 70 miles an hour to the next spot. Meanwhile, they pass up 3,000 fish going spot to spot. They waste half their tournament driving around. And they could be making casts. I ain't telling them what to do. I ain't no expert bass fishing or nothing, but I know you gotta have lines in the water to catch a fish. You ain't gonna catch them driving around. I'm in a tournament. I try to be as efficient as possible, you know, because helps me helps me compensate for my lack of fishing skill to just be as efficient as possible. When I do fish a bass tournament, though, them fellas better hope I don't ever win, because any time that I cash, now I've cashed in several bass tournaments. I even. I even won one of the little weeknight tournaments there a couple years back. But when I do do well in one of them tournaments, I won't let them hear the end of it. Y'all know I like to talk some trash. I don't like talking to people, but when I do, I like talking trash. I let them know that a guy who don't even go bass fishing just beat them. I rub it in. I like telling them to 
giving them the down the road, giving them the how-to about it. I got two bass tournaments coming up here, which I may have to post that. This video may be out of order. So you may be, you may have seen a bass tournament video possibly that was filmed after I'm filming today, potentially. So I don't want to stack these ultralight videos too close to each other. I like to give you, most of you just can't sit there and watch this type of video all in a three to four hour, uh, you know, session. Most of you seem to break it up over a few days, you know, watch 30 minutes, an hour at a time of it. So I don't want to post these type of videos too close together. So I may have to stick a bass fishing video from this tournament in there in between these ultralight videos possibly. So it may be out of order. So if you just watched a bass fishing video before you watch this, you'll know what's up. I'm going to try to win that damn thing and rub it in all their faces when I do. I'm hunging something over here. I set the hook pretty hard on that thing. I thought I had me a fish on. And it wasn't a fish. It felt like a fish. But these sticks, man, they... They know how to thump a jig. When you got a sensitive rod, though, when that jig hits something, there it comes. When it hits a branch or something, it oftentimes feels like a bite. Make a cast right over here. I probably spooked every fish that was right up here on this area. I come up on them like that. That's all right. There'll be more down through here. Can't be too worried about spooking a fish with as many as, as we're catching all along down through here. I think we'll get on some more bluegill. I was really hoping this bluff wall would produce some some bass. The bluegill we got down through here on it was kind of just a bonus. Well, that was a big splash right there. But I think we'll get on more bluegill and stuff on these trees that are on this section of the shoreline here as we move along. I hope we do anyway. Even though that drum's got me in big fish mode, I still want to catch some more bluegill. I just want to get bit. You know, when I go ultralight fishing, that's what I want more than anything. I want action. I want to get bit. I want to catch a bunch of fish. Regardless of what they are, unless it's channel cat. I don't want to catch no dang channel cats. Anything else. I want to catch them. Come on, bluegill. I was just talking about catching fish. Here you are. Perfect timing. He gone. Well, he done made that fish his days. He's going to go tell all his friends about how he got caught on video. And they're going to say, when's the video coming out? Anytime I make an Instagram post, it's always somebody that's going to comment. When's the video coming out? I'm in that tree over here, y'all. I thought it. I thought that thing fell through the. Got it. Got it out. Would have been nice if a fish had bit it. Pulled. Oh my gosh! I did it again. Y'all didn't see that. I did that on purpose for entertainment purposes. Probably gonna break that line. What I'm gonna do? Let's feel that line. Fix our gulp back. Well, if we wasn't doing a raw and uncut video, I'd I'd retie right there. But I ain't gonna subject you to any more reties today than absolutely necessary. We get snagged and have to break off. We can't avoid it. But these voluntary reties, I ain't gonna subject you to it may cost us a fish at some point down through here. That'd be all right. We get another big one on, we'll just have to be extra careful and take our, take our time even more so with it. It kind of stinks. Out. I know y'all can't smell through the, through the camera there watching on a TV set. It stinks out here today, though. There's something in the air. I don't know what it is. 
these fish are lucky they're underwater. Redo this jig here a second. Well, my fingers ain't wanting to work right. There we go. All right, now we're back in the game. Let that thing just sink down. That's typically how I fish this jig. Just cast it out and let it fall. Wait on something to bite it. Sometimes I'll catch fish reeling it in, but mostly with this bait, it's a fall bait. I've mentioned before, like if I'm using other plastics like a trout magnet or Bobby Garland or something like that, catch more fish reeling it in than I do on the fall, but the gulp will catch more on the fall than I do reeling it in. I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's just something to do with the scent or the shape of the bait or, or what. I don't question why. I just go with it. This squirrel up there. He's trying to get him a cameo on this video. Where's he going, I wonder? I wonder what would happen if a squirrel was afraid of heights. Here's a fish. Went to pick up on it. He's on there. Boy, look at him go. He's mad. He's mad that squirrel was trying to take away from his camera time. You ever think there's, there's been a squirrel that's afraid of heights, though? That bluegill said, if we're going to talk about squirrels, he he's getting out of here. He feels like he got gypped. It'd be, I mean, he's up there. He's jumped from that tree over to the cliff. I ain't no telling how far up through there he lives. I guess he just come down and get him some breakfast or something. He's still going. Lord Almighty. Damn squirrels like rats in the trees. Them things, them squirrels, I've seen them jump from my porch to the bird feeder. I mean, they've got some acrobatic skills. Like, their leg muscles, man, they can... They're like little springs. They can jump and get some distance. Well, I thought for sure we'd get some bluegill right here along the edge of this bluff wall where these trees started coming out. I thought they might be some stacked up right here. But again, that's what I get for thinking. Best to limit your thinking, just do. Just go with it. It's all right, we don't need them to be here because we're gonna catch them somewhere down through here. I had one bite me just then. Got one after me again there. Oh. I've been bit twice right there. Let's see if he'll finally hook up before I get it back to me. Oh my gosh. Well, if he ain't big enough to get it after three tries, we don't want him anyway. Yeah, y'all, I got this thing dresser waiting on me at the house. I mean, it's it's going to take all afternoon. It's a lot of time and work just to have a fancy place to store your underwear, you know? I don't know what I was thinking. The dresser that's currently in my room is the one I've had since I was a kid. Like, it's literally as old as I am. I've had it so long, I don't even remember getting it as a kid. I think it was just in my room as a child. And when I got my house, it obviously moved from my bedroom at my parents' house to my house now. So, I guess it's past time for a change, but... At some point this afternoon, when I'm reading these 
Chinese to American translation instructions and and cussing every other word I'm going to be questioning my life's decisions that led me to getting that dresser I'm just really surprised how many pieces of the damn thing come in you know it's got more pieces than the bed and the bed had all that the cross beams there for the support and all that Well, that's the afternoon project. We're going to get this video uploading. It'll take several hours to upload this video to YouTube because of the length of it. So we'll get that going. We'll put some laundry in the washing machine. And then we'll commence the building the dresser. Oh, something was... Something splashing right here, something chasing some minnows right here beside us. Let's make a, make a cast right over there. Something got me too. I knew something was up there chasing minnows. That's a small bluegill though. Were you the one chasing them minnows? I saw you. He ain't gonna confess to it. He ain't gonna tell us whether he was or he wasn't. Something was. And he got caught. He's going down for the crime whether he done it or not. Got a friend with him though. Must have been him. Let's make one more cast right there. Oh, oh, fishy. It must have been him. All right, Tim. Well, onward we go. What is that? Lord, now they flying a drone or a plane or something over there now. They got all kinds of battery operated toys. The boat, the remote control boat was loud. The plane ain't very loud over there, but it's like a high pitched nails on a chalkboard type sound. There's another big splash down there too. Must be some carp or buffalo or something coming up. The sun's up, but we're kind of shielded from it here on this on this bluff wall. It's kind of nice. It's it's we're in that point in the year now. We're getting into fall here, where the mornings are cool. A little too cool for me to wear my my flippy floppies. I got the boots on today, but it's still warm enough that you don't need a you don't need a jacket or a hoodie, and it gets it's still getting pretty warm, or really hot in the afternoon. Still, it's still in you know high seventies, low eighties in the afternoon. So it's a good time of year. Fishing's good this time of year. You can fish pretty much any hour of the day and be comfortable. Football season's back, which I know a lot of you don't watch football. A lot of you do. I do. I've had to adjust my video schedule because I was posting Mondays and Thursdays on my main channel. But once football started back, you know, there's Monday night football and Thursday night football now, and I noticed it's hard to compete when, when Monday night football gets 20-something million views and Thursday night football is getting 15 million viewers. It's hard to compete with that when you're doing anything else. So I've adjusted my 
publishing schedule to compensate for it. Them dang Vol Navy people, man, they can have it going up and down Tennessee. I love Tennessee football, but I hate the Vol Navy. Thankfully, it's only a few weekends a year where we get knocked out for the whole weekend because of them people. I don't know. I don't know who came up with the Vol Navy concept, but they ought to have to go to jail for what they've done to a common man like me. It ought to be criminal. And Bluegill had just come off the hook. Ought to be. He ought to be charged with a crime too. Spitting that hook like that, embarrassing me on video. I'm supposed to look like a professional out here. And that bluegills done come off, making me look like an amateur. Now he won't bite again either. He won't give me a second chance at him. That bluegill really made me look bad, didn't he? He ought to be ashamed. I really thought we'd be just tearing them up over here once we got back on these trees. Maybe I'm just being maybe I'm just being too impatient. Y'all just tell me to calm down three notches. Hold your horses, as the old saying goes. Hold your horses. Horses are one of them animals that I just, of all the animals on the planet, horses are one that's probably my least favorite. I know a lot of people are into horses. I'm just not. I never, I've never had a desire to ride a horse. There's a fish. Uh, I just, you know, they're, they're supposedly pretty smart creatures I, I just don't I never got into them I don't know I think you got to be just a some people love them and there's people like me it's just completely indifferent to them I think you got to be a horse person I'm a bluegill person myself I just ain't into horses one of my viewers he used to tune into the lot back when I was doing live streams more frequently he'd tune in he had a horse named Toby he'd watch my live streams while he was out there in his barn with his horse named Toby and y'all know I hate the name Toby it sounds like nails on a chalkboard too just like that remote controlled plane they flying back there Wonder how horses feel about the name Toby. You think that you think his horse is embarrassed that is that he got named Toby? Because I think most humans would be. There were some more fish right there. They in here chasing some minnows. But I mean, if horses are smart animals, they're able to understand words and a lot of commands and stuff. I wonder if they're if they dislike a name. I wonder if there's ever been an animal that disliked its name so much that it just refused to acknowledge it. You know, like you know, like my dog Daphne, for instance. If I say Daphne, she knows her name. She'll look at me. I get her attention by calling her name. Like, I wonder if there's ever been an animal that is just, just dislike their name so much they refuse to acknowledge it. Well, what did that fish do? He got me. Did he tie, somehow tie a knot? This fish, I had a fish hit me over there. I don't even know what's happened here. Oh, he got around that. 
there's part of that lead right there on the jig head that's there it come. There's a little piece of that jig head coming off. Let's switch our gulp out there. That thing's tore up now too. We'll figure out what the heck it happened. That fish right there is like one of them one of them girls that can tie a knot in a cherry stem with her with her tongue. I thought that fish had done the same thing with my fishing line around my jig head there. You fellas get a girl that can operate a tongue to the point that she can tie a knot in a cherry stem, you better keep her. That's a talented young lady. I, ain't, I mean, I ain't trying to tell you what to do, but you better keep her around at least for a little while. She's worth a, a few dates anyway. I don't know what that fish done to me over there, but we're back in business now, though. Got a fresh gulp on there. We got a fish first cast with it, too. Come over here, fish. You done been caught. You couldn't resist that fresh bait, could you? Had some fresh scent on there. Go back over there and get us another one, then, maybe. It's already been a productive day for numbers of fish, but I still want to get me a bunch more. Here comes another boat. I hear them coming. I think this one over here is coming back. He went by earlier. He went right in there. He can't go 70 miles an hour. He can only go about 40. But he went 40 miles an hour the other way. Went down there, probably couldn't catch a fish. So now he's going 40 miles an hour this direction. These bass boats are something else. I just don't understand their logic. If they were, if they were racing off somewhere to a place that was just stacked with fish, I could I could get behind that. I could understand it. But every time I see them out on the water, you know, you, you see them the 70 miles an hour, they come in and get on top of you fish. They make four or five casts, and then they go on again. They, ain't, they don't even know where they're going like a dog chasing a car. They're just, they just running after it. That's all they're doing. I think they like, I think that's what it is more than anything. I think they like riding around in that boat. And they use fishing as an excuse to ride around in the boat. That's, that's probably, we just solved the, the mystery here of bass fishermen. They don't even like fishing. Do you hear that bluegill? He don't hear nothing. Fish ain't gonna listen to nothing I got to say. I don't know how many boats we've seen now, but I've seen enough, I'll tell you that. As we reel in another fish. And bass boats ain't putting off very much wake, but it's still more than what I want to see. I like coming out on days where I can just have the water completely with myself. I'm selfish like that. I like having just peace and solitude as I whack that tree. My belly growls. Disregard my belly, y'all. Ain't had no breakfast today. Got another fish though. Oh, some fish right here. I think that's like three in a row. That's a little better one right there. Now I'm gonna back off this area and get repositioned. Yeah, that's a better one right there. I stick this one on a board too. You want you want to get your measurement today, Mr. Bluegill? I don't know if you're gonna be eight inches or not. We'll find out. Oh, we ain't either, because he ain't gonna let us. Hey, 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 hey. Uh -uh. It's okay if you're not eight inches. 
No, oh, he's probably seven and a half there, I'd say. Still a good fish. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to get repositioned where I can make another cast. Up under these trees, that boat weight kind of pushed me up a little bit too close. Let's swing out and come back. Here we go. Now we're going to be in business. Now we're in business. I, th I think, yeah, I think that was three in a row right there, y'all. We got a we got a streak going. The S word. Every time I say streak, we, we end it immediately. So we'll see if it happens here, too. Not this time. Oh, maybe we are, because he's got me in something. Oh, my gosh. I just broke off. I ended the streak just like that. Dead gummit. I felt him get in that branch down there. He was all wrapped up in it. I couldn't pull him out. Well, I knew when we... When we had that abrasion on our line there earlier from the, where I got hung in that tree, it might come back and bite us at some point. So we were due. Is that all over the, I don't know what that is, all over that jig head? What's all over that? I wonder if that ain't catfish slime on that jig head. Because I had them jig heads out while I was catfishing the other day. I can't see. There it is. I gotta get my glasses out. You know. I had uh, uh, them jig heads out and I bet you when I brought them big catfish in I grazed that magnet there with them jig heads and got them all slimed up. I need to move that magnet. I've been thinking about doing that. I've been thinking about moving it I, I run that, that bolt through and put it on my gear track. That way they're right here handy. You know, easy to get to. It's convenient when I'm ultralight fishing. But when I'm, when I'm catfishing in this thing, they're in the way. So I thought about putting it like, drilling a hole like right up in there inside this cubby and bolting it right there or just gluing it on there. But I'm afraid if I glue it, it may it may bounce off with just bouncing down the road and stuff. I could, I could maybe glue it back here that way it would fall down. That may be what I do. I might glue it here, and then if it falls out from road bouncing and stuff, it'll go down in that pocket. But that would get it out of the way, but yet still keep it still keep it handy. It's a work in progress. I'm always tinkering with stuff. I ain't got no, I ain't got no building skills to be making no dressers this afternoon, but I can, I can put some glue on a magnet and glue it to my kayak. <laughs> Whether or not it'll hold, I don't know, but we're going to, we may end up trying that. I'm going to try to thread this gulp on over that dried catfish slime. Pretty sure that's what that is. Them fish I caught the other day, it was some big ones. I was happy to get them too. Where's we at over here? Oh, there we are. I was throwing up under these trees. Yeah, I said the I said the streak word, the S word, and it was over just like that. We'll probably catch one on this cast right here now that the streak is over. I had one hit me. I had one hit me again. He was trying to. Yeah, another one hit me. Must be some small fish there after it. 
There's one big enough to eat it. This one was able to get it gobbled down, wasn't you? You know, bluegill. Oh, bluegill. Boy, you weren't coming free either. You got it right through the nostril. There you go. I guess I'll just go ahead and cast over there again. I don't see why I wouldn't. I don't know what they're holding on over there, but there's clearly something that several fish has been caught from up under there now. Probably holding on whatever that other fish got me broke off in. Well, not one to bite that time. Let's try it one more. Oh, I'm in that tree. Oh man, come on. There we go. I probably done got us some more abrasion when we just retied. I probably done done it again. At least I didn't get my rod behind me over here. I didn't bring my skipjack rods. Since I gotta do some bass fishing tomorrow. Even if we got on skipjack or white bass today, I'd just let them go. So I didn't bring those, but I did bring a catfish rod just so I could get me a thumbnail since my other one was messed up from the other day. I gotta remember to do that. I'll, you know what'll happen is I'll forget. I'll get all the way back over there to the car and go to get out and be like, oh crap, I gotta go back out and get my thumbnail. <laughs> There's a part of a tree that's coming out in the water right over there. I wonder if there ain't something on it because it looks like an older. It may just be part of a branch though. I like them old. When I see an older tree, you know, something that's clearly been there a while. Those oftentimes have more fish than the newer stuff that's falling in. We got one right here. get dizzy spinning around like that bluegill. Or bluegill get dizzy. And you reel them in and they're spinning like that. I wonder if it's like a human spinning around a bunch of times. I got a lot of questions for these bluegill. Bluegill and a squirrel. Do bluegill get dizzy when they're spinning and do squirrels ever have instances where they're scared of heights? Like, has there ever been a squirrel that just won't climb a tree? I guess we wouldn't know because they'd probably, if they wouldn't climb the tree, they would probably get eaten pretty quickly. I guess a cat or a coyote would make quick work of them. But there has to be, I mean, humans are abnormally afraid of a lot of things like I hate ghosts you know I'm terrified of ghosts I don't particularly like snakes either you know there has to be animals that are the same way that they just for whatever reason don't like something surely we're not alone in that speaking of not being alone I probably shouldn't even bring this up because we're going to get all the weirdo conspiracy theorists coming out in my comment box over this one. But I've been not closely following along, but I've at least read the headlines of some articles, which, you know, those are, those are always telling the truth on the Internet. Oh, I'm in another tree. But anyway, I, I shouldn't bring this up. So we're going to have all the weirdos in my comment box. But they found them aliens down there in Mexico. And they've supposedly run them through the x-ray machine and uh, CAT scan and stuff. 
and they're supposedly legit and it's it's supposedly like human bones human type bones with metal in them it's like we it's like a alien that's part human part machine like the terminator but they're tiny though they're like little baby aliens or something they got real narrow frames with big heads I don't know what to think about all this alien stuff you know we're seeing them well I say we I ain't never seen no alien but there's more instances of people seeing them now and catching them on video and stuff than ever before but is that because they're around more now like there's more more of them here or is it just our technology's gotten so good that we can actually see them now i don't know i don't even know if they're real i find it hard to believe that we're the most advanced civilization in the universe although these bluegill right here seem pretty advanced at times too but you know what i mean like is it really are we the best the universe has to offer us really we can't even figure out what bathrooms we're supposed to go in. And we're the most advanced species in the universe. Come on. So there's that point of thinking. But then there's also, it's like, what's, what's the real, I mean, there's always the story and then there's the backstory. Information gets out when people want information to get out. So it's like, why are they showing this stuff are they trying to distract us from something else are they trying to cover up something that you know the government or the military is doing you know i don't know that's that's why i shouldn't even brought this conversation up you know if, if you and i if we were fishing in a boat together that's a conversation we could have individually but when you have a conversation with a large group of people thousands of people on a youtube video the comment boxes there's probably going to be some weirdos that my moderators are going to have to block because <laughs> these kind of conversations bring out some real nut jobs i shouldn't have brought it up my moderators they're, they're going to be working overtime on this video i don't know what's going to go on with these aliens though this is a better fish I think it may still be a bluegill, but I think it's a better one. Yeah, it is a bluegill. I mean, he's he's a quality bluegill, but I thought he was bigger, man. He was really fighting there. You're a feisty thing. That fish ate his Wheaties, folks. Oh, oh. I was going to show him off, too. He didn't want to be showed off. Let's uh, let me back up a little bit. I want to hit this area a little better here. That wind moved me along a little quicker than I would have liked. Let's spin back around and make a few more casts over at them rocks. You can see where them rocks have broken off. as some of them sticking up in the water there. I think we're going to catch some more fish over there on them. Yeah, I don't know about these whole alien things. I don't know what's going to happen with them. Their technology, if they're legit aliens, their technology is clearly better than ours, so hopefully they're not hostile. But something's going to come out with it. It's coming. They're just, it's like the putting a frog and bull in water thing. You know, you drop one in bull in water, it jumps out. If you put it in cold water and slowly heat it up, it'll boil to death. I don't know if that's actually true. I've never tried to boil frogs. I think anybody who would boil a frog's probably psycho. So I don't know where that whole analogy come from. But y'all know what I'm talking about. It's like they're, they're trying to slowly break us into something versus never talking about it. And all of a sudden, you know, the aliens are invading us. Bluegill, you tore up my gulp. Bluegill, why'd you do that for? Let's flip it upside down. Oh, 
I didn't flip it up. I flipped it right side. I was trying to flip it upside down. I flipped it right side up. I got aliens on my brain. My aliens abducted my brain for a second there. There's a squirrel fight going on over here. You hear them? I think one of them fell in the water. I don't see them, but I heard them. I heard them fighting over there. They're squealing and running through the leaves. It's one thing for humans not to get along, but I expect the squirrels to act civilized. Oh, I thought I had another. I was watching my line and it just stopped. <laughs> I think I pulled it too far away from them. There's some fish over here on these rocks, so. I don't know if there's any aliens over there, but there's definitely some fish. But supposedly, if them aliens are legit, if they're real, the ones in Mexico are supposedly bone and metal. It's like the Terminator. Who would have thought Arnold Schwarzenegger would be in the most impactful movie of our lifetime? I'm going to keep casting over there though, as long as we're catching some fish. If they want to keep biting, I'm going to keep catching them. This boat wag don't put us over on top of them. Another one hit me. Yeah, there's several rocks here that's that's come out on this. You can see up in the trees there, you've got a cliff wall that comes down and then it comes out at an angle there. So I'd say a lot of them rocks have broke off. And they're right here on the edge of the water. Probably it's got all kinds of moss and algae on them rocks that the bait fish will eat. And it keeps the other fish, like, like bluegill and bass and stuff, around there. I talked about catching them. Now I ain't going to get another bite. Well, I didn't want to catch another one right there anyway. Well, let's move along then, daggummit. Them old fish, they ain't never on cue, are they? They don't strike like them riders out there in Hollywood. I don't know what we're going to do for TV shows next year if they don't get on the ball and get things worked out. When football season's over, we ain't going to have nothing to watch. That might be a good thing for me, though, if there ain't nothing on TV. More people be watching YouTube, I might get an extra view or two. Might help my calls. Can't hurt anyway. Hard to get a lot of views this time of year. Football season, hunting season. Fishing videos go way down, so thanks to all of you who have sat through this and, and watched, not only for watching this video, but just for watching in general this time of year. I appreciate you. I appreciate you more than this bluegill appreciates me right now. He don't appreciate me at all, even though I'm going to let him go. He still don't like me. Ain't nothing I could do to make that, that bluegill like me. Nothing. I've ruined that relationship with him. I'll make his friends like that gulp, though. they all going to eat it. As soon as I get it in front of another one, they're going to eat it. back up here in a second that wind the wind ain't blowing bad today but occasionally when it does hit you it moves you along a little quicker than I'm wanting to fish another fish tapped me there it 
it's almost time for these leaves to start turning. Some of them are. They'll all be turning here before long. A few more weeks. I got that new mower here recently. I got me a zero turn mower skag. Well, it's going to make doing leaves a whole lot easier at my house this year. I always run them over with lawnmower, mulch them up. But now with this skag, I can go forward, run over them one way, then I can back up and get them again. With my mower that I had, I had that John Deere riding mower. I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Show yourself off, Bluegill, before I let you go. But I couldn't keep the mower blades going while I was moving in reverse, like it was some safety mechanism thing. Wouldn't let me do that. But now I can with the with the zero turns. That's gonna make doing leaves a lot easier. I'm actually excited about mowing the yard again. <coughs> this uh, is a cough and blow up your earphones there if you're listening with with ear pod things but that, that zero turn it's fun to ride it ain't fun to get caught in that tree over there that i mean let's see if i can get that thing out there it comes i've managed to get in some trees today but we've been fortunate i've got out all of them it's talent folks y'all keep practicing y'all keep casting in them trees Eventually, you'll learn to get out of them the same way I do. It's a practice. I've had a lot of practice through the years. I've, I've, I've put my jig in more trees than I have fish's mouths, that's for sure. I didn't get this good at getting jigs out of trees overnight. <laughs> that wind needs to quit now. I was just talking about how it wasn't blowing that bad, and here we are getting pushed along. One of the challenges of fishing in the falls when you get all these leaves on the water, your jig falls down and your line will go over them leaves and it'll it'll stop it because your jig is so lightweight. It'll just stop that jig from falling. It'll be a little bit of a challenge. Sometimes you gotta pass up some areas that are that you know is gonna have some fish just because you can't you can't get a cast to them. You can put on a heavier jig, but you do that, even if you fall through the leaves, you're going to be falling so quick that you're probably not going to get bit. So you just got to, you got to work around it. I like fishing in the fall, though. It's, you know, weather's perfect. It's pretty. Fish are usually biting good, starting to feed up for winter and stuff. You know, about another month, it's really going to be Catfish bites already turned on. It's it's been getting a lot better, really, since the spawn ended. But it'll continue to get better on up through October, November, December. You know, it's usually not till around here anyway, East Tennessee, about usually late December, January. That's when it starts getting cold, cold here. In January, February is our coldest months. That's usually when we're going to, if we get any snow at all, that's usually when we'll get it. Now, there have been odd years where I remember one year when I was a kid, it snowed on Halloween. We had like a good ground covering snow. But that's more the exception than the rule. Hey, sometimes October here, it'll be 70 plus degrees the whole month, you know could go either way. It could be hot or cold in October. But January, February is when we're going to be. We guaranteed to be cold in months. That's when it's time to go to Florida then. <laughs> That's when it's time to get the heck out of Dodge. I do want to go back to Florida this year. I'm probably going to go I might try to go before Christmas, possibly. We'll see. We'll see how things work out. 
my mom's wanting to go down to a place called Sanibel Island. Apparently they got a bunch of seashells down there. It's on the Gulf side of Florida near, I think it's pretty close to Tampa in that area. She's wanting to go down there, so I may end up going down there with her at some point this fall or winter. I don't ever, you know how it is, you, you get older, your, your parents are adults, if, you, if your parents are still alive, you know, those of you out there watching, they're adults, you're adults, you just don't have a lot of time together anymore. You know, you both got your own lives and doing stuff, and so if we can make it happen, I need to, need to do something with her if possible this fall, get down there and try to make some memories. You got the chance, if you, if you folks are still alive out there, those of you watching, try to visit them, talk with them whenever you can, because it, it ain't gonna last forever, you know. It's gonna end sooner than you think. So take advantage while you still can. That boat right there, he'd take advantage of catching the fish if he wasn't motoring down the river. There's one. There's one gobbled me up. He's pretty good ways out there from the bank too. I couldn't couldn't get a jig up there under them trees. I'd say it's probably still, even though where we're sitting out here, it's probably still at least 15 feet deep where I'm sitting right now. That fish was up. I ain't letting this jig sink down. I bet I ain't, with the exception of them few casts we made by the bluff wall where I was consciously focused on letting that thing fall down. I bet you every fish we've caught has been probably four to six feet deep at the deepest. They've been up in the water column. Hopefully we get around this tree here, we're gonna have areas where we can cast this jig a little closer to the shoreline. That'll help our calls, I think, as far as catching some more bluegill. We still ain't got a bass yet, have we? Normally I catch some smallmouth out here. We got one yet. Got that big that big drum though. That sealed the deal for me today, man. That drum was awesome. I wish I hadn't spent the whole fight thinking he was a channel cat. <laughs> It probably was to my benefit, though, that I I wasn't super hyped up and excited during the fight because it helped keep me keep me calm, you know. Let that let that fight play out, so I didn't get too aggressive with it. It's one thing about two pound. You can catch some big fish on two pound line. You just can't be you can't you can't horse them. You can't get aggressive. That's when things are going to go wrong. Got to play your drag, you know, and just tire that fish out. That fish, by the time we got him up here, I was able to, you know, get hold of him and stuff because he was he was exhausted. He'll probably spend the rest of the day down there in bed taking him a nap to recover from it. I think the biggest fish I've caught on the ultralight and two-pound line was last winter, I got this video on my channel. If you if you knew and ain't ain't seen it, but I hooked a big blue cat. I thought I was I was using I was in my other kayak, I was using the live scope. And I tossed that jig out thinking I was throwing to a crappie. Because I didn't know I saw a fish. I had no idea what it was or how big it was. But it ended up being a blue cat and it was <laughs> it was a big blue cat. I got him all the way up the kayak. It broke the line as I was trying to reach for him. But we got him all the way up. It was it was a pretty intense battle. It lasted a long time. 
fish like that, you know, if I if I caught a a 25 30 pound catfish that's a good fish you know and, and i'm going to enjoy it while i'm catching it but a month later am i going to remember that specific fish probably not you know off the top of my head anyway because i've caught more fish that size during the during the month but when a fish that big gets caught on an ultralight <laughs> that's a memorable fish for years and years and years you know that's one you don't forget it's just it's 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 more fun it's more memorable when you're doing it on the on the lighter tackle than the heavier catfish gear that i normally use now i wouldn't want to battle my fear with using lighter tackle in catfishing is when the day comes that you hook that hundred pounder that triple digit fish when that happens if that happens for me, I hope it does. I don't want it to be on a light tackle setup. <laughs> I mean, I want it to be, I want to have a chance at landing that fish, that once in a lifetime fish. I want it to be on my, on my traditional catfish tackle. But I do see the benefit of fishing with lighter tackle for catfish. You know, Joe Jellison down there He's got the guide service down there in Chattanooga. He's got the YouTube channel, Chat Cats Fishing, too. He does a lot of light tackle catfishing. It's basically bass rods and 10 pound line. And he gets down there below the dams and free lines baits and, and hooks into some monster catfish doing that. And, you know, it takes time to get a a trophy class catfish in on 10 pound line and, and bass tackle but he has a lot of fun doing that I mean, it's a it's a it's a it's a lot of fun to catch those big fish on the lighter tackle but i'm just i'm just terrified of hooking into a, trying to do that you know and hooking into that 100 pound class fish and it and, and it breaking me off on 10 pound line my one chance you know when it happens, I, I just want it to be on. I want it to be on a. Well, that's a. That was a nice thump. But I want it to be on a. My normal gear. This bluegill here, though, I want him to be on the ultralight gear. If I was trying to catch him with my catfish rods, we wouldn't have, be having any fun, would we, bluegill? It's all about matching your tackle to the fish. As Randy Go, Trout Magnet Man, says, it, it ain't no such thing as a fish too small, only tackle that's too big. I'm pretty sure it's Randy that said that. That's the damn truth. The fellas that fish for them three inch trout up in the mountains, they can still have a good time doing it. As long as they're rods are limber enough to take advantage of it you know you don't want to be out the broomstick catching bluegill you just be jerking them in ain't no fun i want to see that rod being i want to feel them pulling drag you know it's got to match a tackle got another boat over here He's on the other shoreline, but he's headed this way. I hope he, I hope he gets bored of not catching fish over there and motors off like the rest of his friends. I actually think they might be crappie fish. I think he just reached down to a minter bucket. Them people are usually a little bit more patient. I just don't have a great desire to use minnows and back before I started using the gulf, I'd, I'd use a lot of like wax worms and mill worms and stuff like that. I just don't have a desire to use that stuff anymore since getting pretty good with the gulp here because there's another fish. When you're using live bait, you pretty much get one fish per live bait, and you gotta put another one on all the time, so it's not very efficient. 
you gotta go to the bait stores and buy it. You gotta try to keep it alive. My gulp here, I can keep in my peacup and my kayak. They're ready to go all the time. You nasty fish. Look at this fish right here. He's got something in his mouth. You look like you got chewing tobacco in there, fish. I need to spit that out. Nasty thing. Did it look like he had a mouthful of skull, didn't he? Nasty fish. I'll give you mouth cancer. Old fish probably ain't got no Surgeon General warnings down there on the chewing tobacco underwater. They probably they probably don't know that it causes cancer. You hear that bird? What well, bird's mad at something over there, ain't it? He's man, he's going to town on something. He's giving it the how to. <laughs> there's a there's a domestic dispute going on over there in that tree, y'all. It's still happening. I hope y'all hear that on the video. I don't know what kind of bird that is, but he ain't happy. Sometimes in blue jays, you walking on a walking trail through the woods or something, and you come up on some blue jays, boy, they'll tell you they don't want you there. You'll hear them squawking. I don't know what kind of bird that is over in that tree. It definitely ain't a blue jay, but you know them blue jay sounds. So they got a they got a unique sound to them. I like blue jays. That's one of my favorite birds. They come to my bird feeders quite a bit. They eat them. Uh, we call them things: sway, suet, then blocks of feed. They eat off them a lot. I get them ones. With, it's got nuts in them. They seem to like them peanuts. This fish right here liked him a gulp minnow. Come on over here, bluegill. Pricked me in my finger there, bluegill. Fish trying to check my sugar, wasn't he? The fish says, You don't need no lancet, you don't need no diabetes testing supplies. He just uses fin right there. I got another one too. And it's going to pull a little longer, ain't he? That's another good one right there, man. That's another good one. He's got a pale pinkish belly. I ain't gonna put you on the board there, fish, but I bet he's probably seven inch range. Let's go over there and see if we can get another one right there. Other fish learn their lesson from watching his, their buddies get caught. They said, We ain't gonna make the same mistake they did. You'd think they'd want to bite it anyway, even though they saw their buddies get caught, just because it's a privilege for them to be on this video. Fish don't appreciate the opportunity they've been given today, do they? that is over there. Maybe they get in the trash out the dumpster or something. Heard some big clanging. Well, I don't guess we're going to get any more over there. I thought we might. Oh good, I think the I think the crappie fishermen have turned over here, y'all. Oh, there's another fish. I'm distracted by this other boat and this fish seized an opportunity. He's gonna try to steal my bait or something here. Yeah, that's another good one. Man, there's some good quality fish up here today. 
we didn't catch one on my last ultralight trip over at Fort Loudon. We didn't get one this size the whole trip. We've had several like this today. I'm gonna put this one on a board, but I might be shy eight inches. Yeah, just a just a shade shy of it there, about seven and three quarters probably, maybe a little over. Still a dang good fish. Dang good fish, y'all. Let's see if we can catch another one. Yeah, I don't know if y'all having fun or not, but I am. Well, I get fish like that, and as many as we've got out here today, this is why this is one of my favorite places to fish. Like if I, if you said I could only have one place to ultralight fish the rest of my life, I'd probably pick Clinch River, you know, Melton Hill. It'd probably be where I'd go. I say all that and there'll be people over here fishing this place out. <laughs> I don't want to do too good a sales job for it. Be over here, everybody will be showing up over here keeping these fish and there won't be nothing for me to catch. They don't want to eat them out here though. They'd probably get the cancer if they do. Downstream from all these nuclear plants and stuff. They signs up at every boat ramp around here telling you don't eat the fish. A lot of people still do it though. People argue with me in the comment box stuff about it. They'd be like, well, my granddaddy, he's 95 years old, smoked two packs of cigarettes a day and ate fish out of there his whole life. He's fine. So, it's one of them things, you know. Ain't my place to tell people what to do. I just don't want them catching all these big bluegill out of here and taking them out so hey, I can't catch them. <laughs> I won't be able to keep catching them over here. Oh no, now that boat's turned, he's coming back this way. That gummit. Y'all know I don't want to talk on camera around people, and I definitely don't want to talk to people. We may have to they get over here close to me, what we'll have to do is we'll just go around them. We may sacrifice some shoreline down through here, but we'll just go around. We ain't trying to have no human interaction today. This, me talking to you through the interweb is all the human interaction I want to have today. I'll talk to my mama this afternoon because I have to talk to her every day. She's got to hear her baby boy's voice every day. But that will be the only other human one-on-one -on -one interaction I have today. Sometimes, sometimes I just need a day. All you introverts out there watching, you know what I'm talking about. You extroverted people, well, there's something wrong with y'all. I had a fish hitting me. There's something wrong with him. He didn't commit to it. This is a big tree right here that's fell off the wall. I think we're gonna catch some fish on it. I think it's gonna be, I got a, I got a gut feeling. It says there's gonna be some fish on this tree. You'd think by now I've learned not to think. Because every time I've thought something down through here, I've been wrong. But I'm thinking there's going to be fish on it. Here's one. Yep, he's on. I thought he's going to de hook himself there for a second. Let's make another cast right there. A tree like that, you think there might be a crappie or two on it as well. been a while since I got on some crappie. I have an easier time with them when I can live scope them, but I just, 
when I'm doing ultralight fishing, I just have a better time. When I first got the live scope, I was super into it, you know. But now I think part of my enjoyment of this style of fishing is the anticipation every time I cast, not knowing what's going to bite or when they're going to bite. And if I can see if there's fish there or not or how big those fish are before I ever cast, well, it kind of takes away from it. But that live scope is super helpful when I'm specifically targeting crappie. Oh, no. We may be breaking off right here, y'all. I set the hook hard into that tree. I come out of one branch I set it into another. I don't know if we're getting this one back. Well, I'm in real trouble now because I know y'all ain't going to set through me watching or, or set through watching me. Re I can't get my words. You know what I'm trying to say. You ain't going to watch me retie again. Oh, my gosh. I, I ain't getting it out. I'm going to get in this tree behind me here too with my other rod. Oh, crap. Yeah, y'all. Oh, no, no, I think it may give. It did. Let's check our hook here. We got it back. Let's see if we bent our hook. We, we did bend our hook. We've tore our gulp up. But we're not retimed, by gosh. That's a small victory. We'll just bend our hook back. Yeah, it still feels sharp. Let's get another gulp on there. Yeah, that tree right there. Well, we done. We're sitting on top of it now. We've done. <laughs> we've done ruined any chance we have of catching any more fish on it. But we got our jig back. That'll save us about fifteen cents. And fifteen cents is add up, man. Pennies make dollars. Dollars buys you freedom. That's what I say, anyhow. I'm so stocked up on these jig heads now. I got so many of them there at the house. I'll probably never run out again. But I still don't want to be losing them if I don't have to. All right, let's get spun back around here now. I ain't checked this lens in a while, see if y'all got any water on there. How y'all looking? Oh, you still looking pretty as ever. I ain't a drop of water on that lens. get spun back around and keep making our way along. That boat over out they must be sitting on a brush pile or something. Every time I look at them they point it in a different direction so they must be on a brush pile. move along. I bet I spooked every one of them fish on that tree when I got over on top of it to get my jig back. It's alright. There's plenty more trees down through here. There's plenty more where that come from. We've been catching fish all the way down this shoreline so I imagine we'll keep catching them down through here. There's lawnmower mans over there behind us at the park. Always something, folks. Remote control boats, remote control airplanes, bass boats, but now lawnmower man. He's got one of them mowers that you stand up on, and it's like a zero turn, but you stand on it. I ain't never been on one of them. But just looking at them, I think I'd still rather have the kind like I got where you've got a zero turn, but you're sitting on it. As big as my yard is, I mow about three acres. I don't want to be standing for all that. Too lazy for that nonsense.
this fish right here, so he ain't staying no, no mower either. This fish mows his yard, he's riding. Quit lying, fish. We know you ain't got no yard. You got a bunch of grass down there, certain areas of this lake, but you ain't, you ain't mowing it, fish. I know you ain't. They put them chemicals in here occasionally, control the growth of it. I wish they wouldn't mess with that stuff, you know. Fishing's better when you got when you got plenty of grass. But the problem is these rich people with all these fancy boats and stuff, all them ski boaters and wakeboarders and all that crap, they don't like having all them weeds on the water. And they're the ones with the money, so they got the influence, you know. I'm in another tree. Got it out. Talent. I may not be talented enough to put together a dresser this afternoon, but I can get that jig back out of a tree most of the time. Got another fish right there too. I put it right in his mouth on that cast, didn't I fish? He's sitting over there just waiting. He, he probably saw me cast into that tree and was disappointed. He was gonna miss his opportunity. Then next thing you know, boom. I'll make another cast and it was dead on. I see part of a, a tree or a piece of wood over there or something. I bet that's what he was holding on. Get closer than that to cast it. Though. I ain't. It's a lousy cast. That's better. I'm right over beside it now. Comes another bass boat. 70 miles an hour. The 70 mile an hour bass. Oh, hit again. Must be some small fish over on that thing. Let's make one more cast to it. Let me cast a little bit to the right there. I thought for sure there'd be some more fish on that, but again, I can't be thinking, y'all. I gotta quit thinking. Less thinking, more fishing. At least it smells better now. Whatever I, whatever was over yonder, that was stinking. I've, I've gotten far enough away now. I don't smell it anymore. It actually smells pretty good over here if these leaves starting to turn. Fall has a nice smell to it, unless you hundred yards back that way. <laughs> Come on, bluegill, give me that jig back. Well, he don't want to give it up. There it is. Oh, man, we got another boat going around the, the boat that I think's fishing the brush pile. I think they're going around them, which means they'll be heading this way. We may have to, we may have to work around two boats, possibly, down through here, y'all. I may quit and go home before I get to them just because I don't want to interact with people. Ain't that terrible that I'm like that? That I would rather stop fishing than have to talk and have a conversation with another human being? I don't know why I'm like that. I've always been pretty introverted, but since I've been doing the YouTube full time and I'm, and I'm not forced to be around people, as often as I used to be back when I had the real world job, I think I've become even more introverted. Like I think for a while, you know, you just get conditioned to having to do something even though you don't want to. But now that I don't have to, it's just more difficult for me to actually do it. Got that jig back though. That went right for us, didn't it?
Yeah, maybe they'll just be over there talking to each other for a while. Maybe they'll be talked out by the time we get to them. Oh, here's something I forgot to tell you too. For the handful of you out there who are still watching and may be interested. I got to try out the new Old Town kayak the other night. It's this model kayak. It's the Old Town Big Water, but it has the um, pedal assist drive, the electric drive where you pedal. It's like electric bike. A local retailer had a demo, and they had one of their... The, the kayak itself's not coming out until January, but they had one of the demo models, and they were letting people try it out. So I went up there and tried it out. And unfortunately, i got to say, I wasn't very impressed with it. Uh, it's not something that you'll probably see me me having. I like this pedal drive. This is my favorite pedal drive. I like it way better than the Hobie. It's a lot more comfortable for me. Uh, it's just, for whatever reason, that Hobie stepping motion, the Mirage drive, it just, I had a bunch of problems with it giving me sciatic pain. I, I got piriformis syndrome at one point from pedaling too much. This pedaling motion here, it doesn't bother me at all. So I had high hopes when, when Old Town announced that kayak. I thought, man, that's going to be just like an electric bike, you know, and get more speed, still be able to pedal and maneuver around trees and stuff and control yourself, but, but have the option of motor when you're going longer distances. But I don't know. I just didn't... It, it just didn't... It just didn't do it for me. Best I can... Best I can describe, it just kind of felt clunky to me. It didn't feel as smooth as this pedal drive. Um, the motor was quiet, but it, I don't know. It just didn't. It just didn't feel right. It's hard to describe. But it was just kind of clunky. So I was kind of disappointed. I was like, well, I probably won't. Probably won't be interested in that. And it was a. It's expensive anyway. It's. It was. They got it priced at like six thousand dollars. It's the most expensive kayak on the market when it comes out, anyway. But uh, it's just—I don't know. Just wasn't what I thought it would be. It was nice to try it, though. I'm glad they had the, the demo night up there to at least me to get some seat time in it, try it out. But I'll probably be just sticking with this one and keep my—you know—keep my other kayak with the bow mount. This thing's got me in a tree down there. Because we got a boater man up here getting on top of us. This fish has run me in a tree. Dang it. Oh, he's in there good too. He ain't coming out. I don't even feel the fish on there anymore. I think I'm just in the tree now. Give him a little slack and see if he if he is still on. Maybe he can work himself free. I don't even feel him. I think he just got me wrapped up in it. We definitely lose this one, y'all. Dang. Well, we got to retie. And this idiot over here beside us is gonna rev up his motor right here where we're trying to fish. the hell is he doing? Running up on the shore and cranking his motor up like that. Right here where we trying to fish. What a jerk. I can't stand people. We got a retied jig. Y'all bear with me here. Hopefully we ain't going to have any human interaction from this one. He better just get the hell on. I guess. <laughs> Couldn't get any closer, could you? Right. Yeah. What an idiot. I mean, God Almighty, they got the whole, look at this, got the whole damn river here. And he comes over here and he's doing something with this motor right here where we're about to fish. 
on in and then come along right here. Yeah, you know, I just pisses me off, man. Let me get my line through here. We're gonna get back to fishing, but boy, it pisses me off. I just don't like disrespectful people, you know? He just, and I don't even think he knows he's being a jerk. That's the worst part of it. He's just over here making conversation, you know, moseying along. That's where we've come to in the world today. As people are being, people are being jerks and they don't even know they're being jerks. As we get hit with some more boat wake here. At least he's gone now. Hopefully he don't come back. I don't know where the other one went. I guess he probably run them off too. Now he was over there talking to them before he come up here to me. I guess he done run them off too. Well, let's just slide on down through here since he was revving his motor up right over here in this area. He's probably done spooked them fish. So let's just slide on down. We'll get around it and pick back up right over here. Ain't no sense in that though. I mean, hell, the river's a few hundred yards wide here. Give a person some space when you're going around them. I don't, I don't get, I don't, I mean, I don't even understand how you don't think that is rude, you know, or how you think it ain't rude. He looked like somebody didn't have about three teeth in his head though, so. Some people just like it. I'm probably talking about somebody's granddaddy, but the granddaddy's probably the, the dad of the uncle or something because they probably ain't a branch on that family tree. If a person is, if a person is kin folks with that guy, instead of being pissed off at me for talking about him, y'all be thanking me for paying taxes. It's probably paying for your cell phone bill right now to watch this video on. Because that's the kind of people that's kin folks with him, I'm sure. I'll get some comments about that. <laughs> Not only will I have that person's entire inbred family pissed off at me, I'll have a bunch of other people on the YouTube comments defending them too, by gosh. <laughs> it's like when I talk about my neighbors that I can't stand, that live beside me. I get a bunch of people that will defend them vigorously, you know. Now, if they, if they were living beside them, they would hate their guts too. But because a lot of people out there just wanna, just wanna be argumentative with me, they'll defend my neighbors just to, just to have a reason to, to argue with me. <laughs> so there'll be somebody to come to defend grandpa's honor here in that boat. You watch and see. Out of the five people that's still watching to this point in the video, two or three of them's gonna defend Grandpa there. And his family tree that ain't got a branch on it. I ain't a branch on it. Unfortunately, there's a lot of leaves. There's a lot of offspring, but not a single branch. That's one thing about stupid people. You can guarantee they are gonna breed they gonna make more stupid people. That's a that's the one thing they they good at. Oh, I missed one there. Yeah, I think he ran that other boat off. I don't see, I don't know where they went. They must have drove off while I was retying. This fish should have 
swam off while I was retying too, he wouldn't have got a hook in the jaw. Another one right there. Fishy. I'll throw over there and see if I can get a third fish. I think they own that little piece of that tree that's coming out right there. I'm gonna blow up on it though in the wind. I'm gonna have to get repositioned after this. Oh, I had one. Pulled it out of his mouth. Let me make one more cast and we're gonna get repos. Oh, I threw it into that tree. Crap. All right, we gotta get repositioned here first. And then we're gonna throw back over. I still can't believe we ain't caught a bass yet. Not one single, not even a small one. I thought for sure we'd get some smallmouth, but even if they were just tiny smallmouth, I thought there'd be some over here. Nothing yet. All bluegill and one probably 10 pound class drum. Boy, I'm snacking the tree. Let's see if I can. The wind's going to blow me this direction. Let's just let the wind take me over here. That'll be easier to work out of. Thought for sure them fish were holding on that tree and I'd be doggone if I didn't get in it. We've had a bad series of events here. I got got that one fish broke me off in the other tree. I had grandpa going by five feet away from me. And now I'm snagged in another tree. We've got a bad series of events. There we go, we got it. Now we got to do some finagling to get out of here, y'all. This is going to be a... Let's see if I can grab this tree branch here. Yeah, let's see if I can spin myself like that a little bit. I've got a spider web here coming up behind me, too. i got to try to... We'll get out of here directly, folks. I gotta work on my parallel parking skills here. Let's see if we can. There we go. There we go. Now we're out. I got the, I got the rod behind me in the trees. We made it out. We made it to the other side. Things are about to, business is about to get better here, y'all. Grandpa's gone. We're out of the trees. Grandpa better hope his boat don't break down and need a tow back because I sure as hell ain't taking him back. He ain't going to get no charity from me other than my tax dollars. All right. We're moving on here, y'all. We're going to go around this tree, make some more casts, see if I can come up with some more offensive things to say to piss the rest of you off. Y'all may defend Grandpa, but I guarantee you if he is out here fishing, it irritates you too. Especially if it was a day like today where I really wasn't wanting to interact with any people. Some days I'm more tolerant than others. Today my tolerance level is zero, and it was zero when I left the house. I don't know why it's like that some days versus others, but it is. It's just one of the things about me that people have to accept. If they're going to try to interact with me, they need to know there are certain days they can do it and certain days they just need to let me be. Today was one of them days, just let me be. Oh my gosh, y'all. <laughs> In another tree over there. Dead gone, man. When it rains, it pours. Let's see if we can 
let's see if we can go into this snag at a better angle here so we don't end up in another situation like we just got in in that other tree. I don't think this one's very deep down when I got snags, so we should be able to get it back. Well, a little stretch here where we got more snags and fish all of a sudden. If y'all's out here fishing with me, by gosh, you'd be pissed off at Grandpa and you'd be in these same trees that I'm in. There we go, we got it. Hopefully we ain't gonna get no spiders on this tree falling out of us here. Look at that spider web right yonder. You see that? That's a, that's a big web right there. The spider's all up in that tree. Lord, I got all that fishing line there around my pedals too. I normally leave this fishing line kind of in the kayak here and then I, when I get back to the ramp, I throw it away. I don't like throwing that stuff in the water, you know. I don't wanna do that. I had it all around the dang pedal drive. But yeah, like I was saying though, I tried out that the new Old Town pedal drive and I just wasn't I wasn't overly impressed with it. I'd be curious to see how the the general public I mean everybody right now is complaining on the interweb about the price of it, because that's what everybody does. That's been like that from the history of time people's when something new comes out of course it's going to be more expensive than the previous kayak so there people's going to complain about that that's just a given but i'm curious to see when it actually comes out and it's available to to purchase how many people actually buy that kayak and and get some real world reviews on it now elias the last v fishing youtube channel you know, he's somebody I've become friends with through the YouTube and and whatnot. And him and I chat back and forth periodically. He tried that kayak out at the iCast show, and he loved it. I mean, he absolutely well. He spoke very highly of it. He's going to get one, but you know, he's a saltwater fisherman, and so he's going to basically use that that motor in the pedal drive to get where he's going out there in the ocean fishing the the reefs and you know stuff like that and then use the pedals to kind of hold himself in position once he gets out there but for everybody I, you know and even for that i mean i i don't know i just wasn't impressed with how the drive felt and i'm wondering if it's a situation where Elias tried that out at the iCast, the trade show. And since that show, they've been sending that boat around to various dealers. Like the dealer here had it for a few days, and then it goes on to the next dealer, and they try it out and stuff. And I'm wondering if it's a situation where as it's been used more, like more people have been in it and putting some miles on the drive and stuff, if it just feels worse as time goes on because I, I just I don't know it just didn't do it for me so I'm curious to see how it how it plays out with the general public but I do like the bicycle pedaling motion that the fish don't like that fish has never pedaled a bicycle in his life but for whatever reason this pedaling motion feels better on my body than the Hobie stepping motion. I just never could get comfortable with it. And I know I'm the minority on that. Like all, all of my friends here locally that have pedal kayaks, they all have Hobies. Every single one of them. And they all love that pedal drive. So I know it's, it's, it's just me. This is a better fish right here, I think. Yeah, that's, another, well, that's another good bluegill right there. This one's thick, buddy. Look at this, how thick this is, man. He's got some shoulders on him. Look at that. Look how wide he is. You ate that jig kind of deep there, fish. I'm getting it back. Oh! As you put your fin in my finger there. Bear with me, y'all. I gotta try to see down this fish's gullet here.
about got it there. There we go. Get out of here, fish. You lucky. He got it pretty deep, but he didn't get it down the gills, thankfully. Now I'm blown up on where I was fishing at here. Let me spin back around real quick, y'all, before we spook that fish. That right there was a good quality one. He had some shoulders. He was thick. Yeah, I don't know why it is my body just rejects that Hobie pedal drive motion. I mean, the, the Hobie pedal drive is, there's a, there's a lot of things I liked about it. The size of it, the, the weight. If you have problems with it, it's easy to work on. I mean, there's a lot of, it's, I think it's better in current than the propeller system like on the bicycle motion here. So, I mean, there's a lot of good things about the Hobie pedal drive, but I just, my body just always rejected it. And I pedaled so much, I just, I ended up with piriformis syndrome, which took forever to get over. I mean, it was just damn near debilitating sciatic pain. It took months to get over. I just, I can't do it anymore. I still got my other Hobie kayak, the the Pro Angler there, but I, I use the motor. I never even use the pedal drive in it anymore. If I'm gonna pedal, I'll bring this one. This is another big bluegill right here. This We're on some big ones right here on whatever they're holding on over there. Look at this one. This is another thick one right here, man. Thick and tall. Let's put you on the board, fish. I don't know if you're going to reach eight inches, but you're tall. No, he's going to be shy of eight inches. Look how thick that fish is. Oh, man. Oh, oh, now, hey, hey. Look, boy, look at him there. He's put himself in the pocket. <laughs> this fish, he's wanting to go home with me now. He said he's along for the ride. Look how thick he is, though. Man, that's a good bluegill. He about took our gulp with him, too. Let's fix it back. Well, you know what? Let's throw over there again. I ain't opposed to catching another one. I felt one hit me. Dropped it. Okay, now he's got it. That narrow ain't as big, though. Come up here, fish. I was trying to get you bigger kinfolk there. It wasn't a bad bluegill, but we know there's some. We know there's some big daddies over there. know exactly what it is that they're on could be anything though it's falling off here it could be any kind of tree down there. there's all kinds of stuff I'm sure that we just don't see yeah there's another big tree I can see it through that opening there it may have had a branch or something coming off of it them fish were on Let's over a little closer to it and see what happens. Nothing. Well, it was good while it lasted, I guess. <laughs> Got them two good ones in the other. I'm still going to make another cast or two here before we move along, though. Just to see if they ain't some more. It's one thing about this this area, man. We've caught fish. Of course, it's like that over there on Fort Loudon. On my last ultralight trip, too. Or just caught fish. I took a section of shoreline. And for three straight hours, caught fish all the way down through there. 
been pretty much like that here too. I don't know what, how many casts we've made today without a fish. Probably, probably seven or eight there on that bluff walls. I'm hung again. Man, we got some snags. But it's been mostly action packed. There's not been a lot of downtime today. And that's how I like it. That's when I come ultralight fishing, that's what I want. I want to catch fish consistently. I want to get some better quality fish. And I don't want to see any inbred boaters that go five feet away from you as they're working on their motor. Boy, this, gosh, dog, this wind is pushing me up on the shores. I'm trying to get turned here. That was a bad time for that wind to blow this direction, y'all. <laughs> it's a terrible time for it. We're going to be all up in these trees here. I'm in them. At least this branch here is strong enough to I can push off of it. <laughs> bad timing on Mother Nature. All right, well, let's see if we can get this thing out. I don't know if I'm going to subject you all to setting through another another jig time session here. Oh, Lord. I broke off. Boy, I snapped my line halfway down, too. Daggummit. Well, I tell you what, y'all. I ain't gonna subject you to another retie especially when i got to thread that line all the way back through all the guides again and stuff so i won't subject you to it. we've been running this video probably close to three hours now anyway well i look weird on the screen right now i hope the video ain't messed up that'd be that'd be just awful if that happens <laughs> after dealing with all grandpa and all these snags but anyway i had a good day out here fishing anyone anyway, i ain't done i'm gonna rethread this and i'm gonna fish i'm gonna fish on down through here um down here to this next opening for sure anyway so i'm probably going to go another hour or two and just see what all i can get but uh we'll probably go ahead and cut the video off i'll get a little get a little me time fishing i guess without the, the camera and stuff but yeah i'm not gonna it's gonna take me a couple minutes to rethread that line i gotta i'm out of jigs here on my magnet too i'm gonna have to dig them out of my my box here so i won't subject you to it but Again, if you're still watching these videos this time of year during football and hunting season and all that, thanks. I really appreciate you. Extra thanks, too, just for watching these longer videos. Some of you do legitimately watch all of it, even if it's over multiple days. I get people all the time that's, that's commenting and throughout the various things that I say and do through the videos. So I know they're watching the whole, the whole thing. So it means a lot to me that you all like this style of video. I certainly like doing them. I can do this style of fishing all the time. You know, it's one of my favorite things to do. So anyway, thank you so much. I'm going to get this thing rethreaded and see if I can't get me a few more. I still got to get a bass out here before I leave today, y'all. I got to get at least one smallmouth before I'm calling it quits. So anyway, I'm going to get back to that. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.